This is module two, lesson four, solving equations with the variable on each side. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve equations with a variable on each side, solve equations by applying the distributive property, and prove that equations are identities or have no solution. Let's learn solving equations with a variable on each side. Sometimes the variable will appear on each side of the equation. To solve these, use the addition or subtraction properties of equality to write an equivalent expression with the variable terms on one side and the numbers without variables or constants on the other side. So we're going to just apply what we did for solving equations. This time, when we're adding and subtracting stuff from both sides, it will be with the variable. Example one, solve an equation with the variable on each side. Solve five plus seven a equals four a minus 13. Check your solution. Here we can see the variable shows up on both sides. In order to move it to one side so we can solve for that variable, we're going to use our subtraction or addition properties, just like we did with other solving equations, to make it so there's only one variable. So first, we're going to subtract 4a from each side. That way, on this side, we get 0. 4a minus 4a is 0. And on this side, we can just subtract the coefficients if we think back to combining like terms. 7a minus 4a is going to be 3a. Now that I'm at this point, I can essentially just start over and it's like I'm solving for the variable how we've done in the past. So here I would subtract 5 from both sides to make 0 on this side. Negative 13 minus 5, we get negative 18. Then I can use my division property to divide each side by 3. And when I do that, I get a is equal to negative 6. So solving with a variable on both sides was just like solving with a single variable, except I need to use the addition or subtraction property one more time for those variable terms. As always, we do need to check to see if we got the right answer. So when we plug in what we got, a equals negative 6 back into our equation, do we continue to have a true statement? If I multiply stuff out, I end up with negative 37 equals negative 37. My final statement is true. So therefore, the answer that I got must be true. Negative six is the correct answer. Example two, write an equation with the variable on each side. Our real world context here is contest. The results of the Nathan's hot dog eating contest are shown. Suppose the men's and women's winners, Matt and Mickey, decide to compete against each other. To make the competition more interesting, Matt will not start until Mickey has eaten 20 hot dogs. Assume that Matt and Mickey eat at a constant rate throughout the competition. Based on the number of hot dogs eaten in 10 minutes by Matt and Mickey, how many minutes after Mickey starts eating will they have eaten the same number of hot dogs? So first, in this problem, we want to figure out the number of minutes, or m, where Matt and Mickey have eaten the same number of hot dogs. Let's figure out what we know. We know that Matt eats 62 hot dogs in 10 minutes, which is a rate of 6.2 hot dogs per minute. The number of hot dogs he's eaten in m minutes is going to be 6.2 times m. Mickey, on the other hand, eats 38 hot dogs in 10 minutes, which is a rate of 3.8 hot dogs per minute. Because she's given that 20 hot dog head start, after m minutes, her expression is going to be 3.8 times m plus 20 because she's 20 ahead. We want to know when they are equal, so when they've eaten the same amount, we're going to set the two expressions equal to each other. So 6.2m equals 3.8m plus 20. And we got Matt over here with one side and Mickey over here on the other side with her head start of plus 20. Now let's solve the problem. So we're going to take our original equation that has a variable on both sides and solve for that variable. So the first thing I would need to do is get the m's on the same side. And I'm going to do that by subtracting 3.8m from each side. That's going to eliminate it from the side with the number. If you're not sure about which one you want to add or subtract, find where your constant number is and get rid of it off of that side. Now once we simplify, we're left with 2.4m equals 20. So dividing each side by 2.4, we get m is equal to 8.3 repeating. So after about 8 and 1 minutes, 
Matt and Mickey will have eaten the same number of hot dogs. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and use the table to determine when Nolan and Victor will have scored the same amount of points. Assume that Nolan and Victor play in every game and score at the same constant rate as they did in the season shown in the table. Pause the video now and complete both parts. Check your answer. First, we want to know when Nolan and Victor have scored the same amount of points. So we need to set them equal to each other. So down here, Nolan will be on the left, Victor will be on the right. They say that Nolan scored 25 points per game. Where they got that from, last year he scored 750 points in 30 games. If we divide that out, that's 25 points per game. We're going to add that to his total number of points because we want to know his career points. So this year in addition to last year. Following the same format, Victor only scored 23 points per game last year. He scored 782 points, which was more than Nolan, but he played 34 games. So taking the same pace and where they left off from last year, let's solve for how many games Nolan and Victor will have to play to score the same amount of career points. So we would solve for the variable on both sides. I'm going to subtract 23p from both sides. You could also subtract 25p. I tend to try to keep my final answer positive. So because 25 minus 23 is positive 2, then I'm going to subtract the 23 rather than subtracting 25. Either way, you'll get the same answer. Then, because I got rid of the variable on the right side, I need to get rid of the points, the constant number on the left. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 750. 782 minus 750 is 32. So 2p equals 32, divide by 2, p must be equal to 16. So after how many games? 16 games. Let's learn. Solving equations involving the distributive property. Some equations contain grouping symbols. Grouping symbols can include parentheses, brackets, and fraction bars. The steps for solving an equation can be summarized as follows. Step one, simplify the expression on each side. Remove any grouping symbols, use the distributive property if needed. This goes back to what we learned in module one. We're going to simplify as if the equal sign's not there and just do each side separately until there's no parentheses. Then, after there's no parentheses, we're going to use the addition and subtraction properties to get the variable terms on one side and our constant terms on the other, and we'll simplify as needed. Finally, we're going to use our multiplication and division properties to solve for our variable. Let's look at how that works. So example three, solve an equation with grouping symbols. We want to solve seven times the quantity n minus one equals negative two times the quantity three plus n. So our first step is going to be to use the distributive property to eliminate any parentheses and simplify each side kind of separately. So here they already showed they distributed 7 times n is 7n, 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Let's distribute our side. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times n is negative 2n. So we end up with negative 6 minus 2n. Remember, negatives and subtraction are the same symbol. You can think about either however you want. Now that we have our simplified expression, let's begin solving for our variable. So we're going to next use our addition and subtraction properties. I'm going to add 2n to both sides. That will cancel out what's on the right. And doing this way, now I end up with positive 7n plus 2n, which I'm less likely to make a mistake adding things together, so 9n. So 9n minus 7 equals negative 6. Next, I'm going to add 7 to both sides so it cancels off the left. And I'm left with 9n equals 1. Our final step, this is secretly 9 times n. So 9n equals 1. I need to divide each side by 9, and I get my fraction of 1 ninth. Please remember to check your answer. 
if I were to plug in one ninth up here for n in both places and multiply it back out, I should be getting the same answer on both sides. Check your understanding. Solve the given problem. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found n was equal to negative 2. Let's quick look at how we get that. So first we're going to distribute out and I would get 7n minus 14. Then I still have this plus 8 at the end. On the other side, I have 3 times n and 3 times negative 4. So equals 3 times n and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And I have that minus 2 on that side. Next, I'm going to simplify what I can. So I see these things right here are like terms. Negative 14 plus 8 is negative 6. So on this side, I'm left with 7n minus 6 equals. And then on this side, I have negative 12 minus 2. So 3n minus 14. Next, I'm going to use my subtraction property, subtract 3n from both sides. Again, I'm choosing to subtract this side because then my n stays positive, And then I don't have to divide by a negative. So 4n minus 6 equals negative 14. Add 6 to both sides. 4n equals negative 8. So finally, dividing by 4, n equals negative 2. As always, we should plug this back in and check to see if I get the right answer. This one's a little quicker to check than the fraction. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4 times 7 is negative 28 plus 8, negative 20. So on this side, I got negative 20. Negative 2 here, minus 4 is negative 6, times 3 is negative 18, minus 2, also negative 20. Those are equal. We are good. Example 4, solve an equation with a fraction bar. In a previous lesson, we learned that if we see a complex fraction like this, in order to get rid of that fraction, we just need to multiply by the denominator. So, if we multiply both sides by 4, then we get down to this equation, 20y equals 12y plus 16. Now we just have an equation with a variable on both sides, so let's follow our process. We don't need to distribute, so let's subtract 12y from both sides. Simplifying, we get 8y equals 16, then dividing both sides by 8, y is equal to 2. If we check, plugging in, 12 times 2 is 24. 24 plus 16 is 40. 40 divided by 4 is 10. And if I plug in 2 over here, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 equals 10. We are good. That is true. Example 5. Write an equation with grouping symbols. Our real context here is geometry. Find the value of x so the figures have the same area. Over here, we have a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is equal to base times height. So the area of the rectangle is just going to be 5 times x plus 4, base times height. The area of the triangle is equal to 1 half of base times height. So half, here's our base, here's our height. If we want to know when they're equal, then we're going to do 5 times x plus 4 equals 1 half times 12 times 2x minus 6. So let's solve to find when they're equal. First, let's combine these two things. We have two constants, so let's put them together. What is 1 half of 12? That is just 6. Now we need to use the distributive property to simplify each side. So on the left, we'd get 5x plus 20. On the right, we would get 12x minus 36. Now going through and solving for our variable, here they're adding 36 first, and we get 56. Then we're subtracting 5x. 56 equals 7x. Finally dividing by 7, we get x equals 8. This is one of those times where they did not subtract what was on the right. It's easier to get rid of the 5x from over here because when you do 12x minus 5x, you get a positive variable. You don't have to. You could have subtracted 12x and got negative 7x and you could have subtracted 20 and got negative 56. You'll get the same answer either way. It's just usually easier to try to deal with positive numbers, but that's your choice. Check your understanding. Find the value of x so that the figures have the same area. Pause the video now and complete the check. 
check your answer, you should have found that x is equal to 4.5. Both of these are rectangles, so the area is just base times height. So in this case, 10x. On this side, it's 6 times 3 plus x. Here's our base, here's our height. So this side distributing it out, we'd have 18 plus 6x. That equals the 10x. Subtracting 6x from both sides, we end up with 4x equals 18. And then dividing both sides by 4, x equals 9 over 2, which is 4.5. Let's learn identities and equations with no solutions. When we're solving with a variable on both sides, there are three possible things that could happen. So as we just saw, we can get one answer, that's one solution. We can get no solution, where no matter what we try, there's no value for the variable that will make it true. And we can get what's called an identity. The identity just means it's true for every value. The identity situation is also sometimes referred to as infinite solutions, because any number you plug in works. I will generally refer it to infinite solution rather than identity. Example six, solve an equation with no solution. So we have that equation there. If we go through and solve it how we have been, first distributing it out, then we're gonna subtract six y from both sides. If I subtract six y from this side, okay, or if I saw it on that side and tried to subtract, either way, I end up with six y minus six y, which is zero, six y minus six y, which is zero. I'm left with negative 30 on the left and 20 on the right. No matter what I do from this point on, those things are no longer equal. Okay? It wasn't anything that we did wrong to make it not equal. It just means that there are no solutions. So since negative 30 is not equal to 20, it has no solution. So if you ever come across where you do something correctly and all your variables eliminate, so there's none on either side anymore, and you have a false statement such as this, that is an indication that you have no solution. Example seven, solve an identity. Given our problem here, if we go through distributing out, combining like terms, we end up with 12x minus five equals 12x minus five. If we subtract 12x from both sides and then add five to both sides, we end up with zero equals zero. We followed all of our properties that we needed to. Our variables canceled out, so we can't solve for the variable because it's gone, but we still end up with a true statement. That is called an identity. This means that it's true for all values of x, or also known as infinite solutions. If we go back one step from the end, 12x minus five equals 12x minus five. This is where we can tell that no matter what we plug in, we're going to get a true statement. If I plug in one, 12 minus five is seven, 12 minus five is seven. If I plug in two, 24 minus five is 19. On this side, 24 minus five is 19, still true. No matter what we're plugging in, we still get a true statement. This is infinite solutions or called an identity. Check your understanding of one solutions, no solution, or identities. Solve each equation and determine how many solutions it has. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. The first one is an identity. The second one has no solution. The third one has one solution, which is 0 0.5 or 1 half. And the last one is also an identity.